All right, so welcome back to lecture two of uh, for topic 10, uh, which covers chapter seven. And in this lecture, we're gonna take a look at the sources of news media. Okay, so as I stated, we're gonna be taking a look at the sources of news media that we have in the United States and in other countries as well. And we're gonna be dividing them up into sort of two categories to sort of think about these different sources. One is sort of like the traditional news media and the other is what your textbook calls digital news media. Um, and then after we take a look at sources of news media and where most Americans get their news, we're gonna do some, uh, think critically about news consumption and kind of keep these things in mind as you move forward as a news consumer um, to um, sort of tips on how to be a better news consumer and some things to keep in mind to make sure that you are not falling prey to misinformation. So let's get started. Okay, before we you know go in and look at how Americans get their news, I want you to maybe think about your own um, behavior and your own action as it uh, relates to um, news media consumption. So um, what are the news sources that you rely most on to get your news? Um, when it comes to the news, do you read like newspapers? And here I'm not talking about just like print newspapers. Um, I mean, I live in a household where my we actually still get the print version of the New York Times on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't think I've put my hand to newsprint and probably like, well, when we were carving pumpkins for Halloween, we actually put newspaper on the table. So I, I touched the newsprint then. My husband is like totally print. And um, for the New York Times, I'm totally digital for my consumption of news. So, um, you know, whether or not you consume newspapers in print form or actually newspapers because you have a digital subscription to that, is that one of your sources of news? Um, do you read the New York Times, the Washington Post and New York Times? Do you read the n local news, um, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel? Um, uh, that, uh, uh, is that a, a source of news that you rely on? What about televised news? Um, do you primarily, do you not watch any televised news? Um, if you do, are you watching cable news like CNN, Fox, or MSNBC? Do you rely on national broadcast news, the national evening news, um, CBS, ABC, uh, 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 NBC, uh, the Sunday news shows? Uh, do you watch local news at night, either at six o'clock at 10 o'clock? I know a lot of people like watching local news. Why? Because of sports and weather, right? I know a lot of people get the Journal Sentinel. Why? Because they want to read about the Packers um, or the Brewers in my case. Um, but is that a source that you use? What about news aggregators? Um, do you rely on something like Google News when you are just like trying to get a whole, like, do you just go to Google or, you know, or whatever your source is, you, your search engine is, and you just put it in like a news topic and just see the, the news stories that come up? Do you rely on social media like Twitter or Facebook or Instagram? Um, I use Facebook, but mostly just so I could look at my friends' pictures of their dogs. Um, but I, I use Twitter and I follow a lot of journalists on Twitter and um, news sources on Twitter. And I would say that that's a place that I get um, my news. Or do you not really follow the news at all? I have a lot of students who are just like, either they don't have the time or the inclination or the interest, or they're just way overwhelmed and they don't know what to trust, right? So um, when it comes to the news, are you just sort of like one of those individuals that doesn't really consume a lot of news? Okay, so uh, speaking of where people get their news from, the sources of news, uh, this is a, a graph from a chart from your textbook that basically shows where people get their news um, and how that has changed over time. And so, you know, it's probably not gonna come as any surprise to you uh, after reading the textbook, but that where people used to get a lot of their news from the uh, the television, right? Televisual news, um, you know, we really, it still is a, a significant part of where people get their news from. It's from the television, but it's really declined over time. And what's replaced it is, ex, you know, getting your news through uh, the, the digital media, right? Uh, getting news through the internet. Uh, you'll also note it here that newspaper consumption has declined. Um, but as we were talking about on the last slide, that you know, a lot of people might not read their newspaper in a print form anymore. However, they access their newspaper through the internet. So that's a little bit misleading there because that increase in internet 
as a source of news um, in, uh, includes getting that news source um, digitally, your newspaper digitally through the internet. Uh, and radio has uh, actually seen a little bit of an increase here, right? So um, somewhat flat, uh, the, le the lower level of, uh, of uh, you know, least percentage of where people get their news media from uh, and is relatively stable over time. Here is a graph that is from Pew Research, and it basically shows a breakdown um, when it comes to news consumption across platforms between digital devices, television, radio, and print publication. Uh, and so you'll see here that in uh, it, the dark red says that you're getting, that you use that platform often. Uh, lighter pink is sometimes, and then as you get to the top here, um, this is where, you know, never or ra rarely. And so you basically see that when it comes to getting your news from a digital device, um, I think on that previous slide, that's where they called like the internet. Um, you know, that most people use their digital devices to get access to the news. Um, but still a significant number of people use the television. And we were talking about that um, uh, on the last slide. Uh, radio and then uh, print publications is really um, the, that, that is the news platform that, or the platform that people rely a lot less on in terms of getting their news. Okay, and so this uh, graph is taking a look at what's known as the digital age divide. Um, and so that while we do see that access to um, news media that a lot of people are using uh, their digital devices or the internet to access that, uh, that we see that there's a big difference, not surprisingly, between age groups. And so, uh, you know, when you're looking at this graph, the dark purple here is um, TV, like what percentage do, do you rely on to get your news through the TV? Yellow is a news website. Green is the radio. Purple, light purple or whatever is uh, social media. And then uh, this uh, uh, green, the dark green is, uh, is the uh, print newspaper. And then you see that the difference here is the younger folks all the way up to the older folks. And you can see that there's a huge difference, right? That younger people are a lot less likely to get their news media through um, the, uh, the television, but a lot more likely to get it through social media. Um, and uh, that the older that you are, that you're more likely to get your news media through the television and not relying on um, very frequently on uh, social media. Also, older people are more likely to get their news through print media, whereas a lot less likely for younger people. So just, you know, maybe think about what the implications are for that, because the, you know, the type of news you get through the television and print media is really different than the type of news that you get through social media in particular, and also um, uh, through a news website, depending on what that news website might be. All right, let's talk about two categories of news media and the difference between what is known as traditional news media, which is newspapers and broadcast news and radio um, and television. So newspapers and broadcast news that include radio and television and what your textbook refers to as digital media. So let's look at these different categories. All right, so let's talk about newspapers as a form of traditional news media. Well, I think as many of us are aware, tr uh, newspapers are uh, really the oldest method for the dissemination of news. Um, the first newspaper in the United States was um, printed by B. Free Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, in 1729, uh, the Pennsylvania Gazette. Um, legacy news sources that uh, you probably still read today, like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Washington Post, um, all started in the mid part um, of the 19th century. So 1851 for the New York Times, 1889 for the Wall Street Journal, and 1877 for the Washington Post. And so indeed, it is an old method for um, publishing the news. Um, now, in the last lecture, we talked about how one of the checks on the power of the news media is journalistic standards and that um, journalists as professionals learn standards and that they're supposed to use those standards in the reporting of the news. And it's in newspapers that you're most likely to find hard news reporting, uh, the, the implementation and the use of those journalistic standards. That's what drives the newsrooms in, in many of those um, legacy newspapers.
Uh, <clears throat> newspapers offer in-depth reporting and analysis. And so since, you know, um, there are, you know, less limitations in terms of how long stories can be because you can always add additional paper, you know, papers to the newspaper. And in the digital realm, you can have very, very long news stories. You're able to really get into more depth in the print format. Um, and that while newspaper print circulation is down, we saw that on the graph and that actual print newspapers, not, a, a lot less people rely on print newspapers. Um, that a lot that we really do see an increase um, in the last five, six years as newspapers have turned to uh, a, a pay subscription model and what there's a firewall that you can't get through unless you're a subscriber, uh, that we really do see an increase in the number of digital subscriptions to things like the New York Times and the Washington Post. So even though the print circulation is down, um, the digital subscription is, 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 is on the increase. Um, there are some concerns about the rise in digital subscriptions. Um, you know, for one, when the newspaper used to be print um, that uh, and depended upon advertisements um, that, you know, the cost of a print newspaper was relatively affordable. That's not the case anymore. Plus with the print newspaper that once it's printed, you know, you could be at the coffee shop and you know somebody leaves the paper there kind of pick it up you don't have to have a subscription to read it you know it's out there for you know many people to consume you know that's not the case in the digital newspaper world um that there are barriers to access if you don't have a subscription you know you you can't read the news article um and you know those barriers to access are are financial um People, some people cannot afford to have access to a digital newspaper anymore. It's also a barrier to access on print newspapers as well, um, but particularly when it comes to internet access. And if you don't have the capacity to access the digital newspaper, then that becomes a barrier as well. Uh, we know that a lot of people use apps on their phones to access newspapers. Um, but if you don't have good internet access or your cellular access is not good because you live in a rural area, then that's going to serve as a barrier to access in a way that we didn't really face when we had print uh, more of a predominance of print newspapers. The other uh, main source of traditional news media is broadcast news. And what the two categories of broadcast news are um, broadcast television and obviously radio broadcasts um, that come through the radio waves. Uh, television as a single source, uh, news source, it is still the, uh, reaches the most Americans than any other single news source. And so a lot of people still rely on television, whether that's traditional broadcast television, ABC, CBS, NBC, or whether that's cable news. Uh, and uh, radio is also a, another, um, uh, a, uh, part of broadcast news media. You should be aware that there's different kinds of news radio um, or what we would call news radio. Uh, some news radio like National Public Radio or Wisconsin Public Radio, um, those are more traditional news reporting sources. They do original reporting, uh, in particular National Public Radio does, does its own traditional um, uh, news reporting. Uh, driven by you know the journalistic standards that we talked about in the last lecture, um, and uh, so NPR is more like similar in terms of news reporting as to newspapers. Um, but then you know we talk about radio news talk shows, um, and that you should just keep in mind that those are really um, kind of not really uh, news shows in terms of doing original reporting, but it's more like opinion based um, news shows. Oftentimes it's entertaining. It offers a particular perspective, oftentimes an ideological perspective and can be driven by particular personalities. Um, now, when it comes to television, we see that same sort of breakdown. Um, you do have more traditional sorts of news reporting, particularly the evening news, um, NBC, ABC, CBS. Um, you can get traditional reporting, original uh, source reporting on cable news as well, like CNN. Um, but that you also on cable news will have more like, um, you know, sort of like uh, cable news talk shows, right? Similar to the radio news talk shows where they're driven by opinion, not original reporting, and um, oftentimes driven by a particular personality with an ideological perspective. So keep that in mind. 
in mind. Now, when it comes to more traditional televisional reporting and radio reporting, you know, they, they really do serve an important function um, uh, for informing people in the United States, in particular because um, of the timeliness, right? That when there's a breaking news story of any uh, importance, it's generally the television that's going to be there to cover it um, uh, immediately, right? And they cover it in a way that allows you to see the event as it's going on. So whether that, I mean, I remember back, uh, you know, when 9-11 happened, and the um, the attack on the World Trade Center and the, on the Pentagon, um, that you know, uh, you, you relied on the television. You turned the television on in order to get that timely reporting. Um, and so we still see that same function today when it comes to um, the importance of the traditional te televisual broadcast. However, there are downsides to te uh, television news um, and radio news as well. Uh, television in particular covers relatively few topics compared to uh, newspapers um, and doesn't really can't provide a, a lot of depth of coverage uh, because of time constraints, right? And so you have a news show that's a half an hour long if it's the evening news um, and that there are uh, time constraints on how um, deep you can go into subjects. Um, also that there are commercials and so there are rating, rating constraints in terms of content. You don't want to make it too boring or people aren't going to watch and you're not going to have advertisers. So that's more of a concern, particularly when it comes to television news. Okay, the other category of news media is what is known as digital news media. And as we saw on the other, you know, chart that we looked at earlier in this lecture, that many people, especially under the age of 50, rely heavily on their digital devices to get the new, their news. Now, keep in mind that you could use your digital device in order to get what would be considered a traditional news source online. Um, so you could definitely like have an app on your telephone that allows you to access a traditional news source like the New York Times. However, there's other types of digital news media as well. Uh, one that you might be familiar with, with is what is known as a news aggregator. And um, what a news aggregator does is it doesn't do its own original reporting, but like the name says, they aggregate news sources for you. So Google News, Apple News, Real Clear Politics, all of those are good examples of news aggregators um, that when you go to Google News, it will give you a lot of different um, uh, reporting on a particular subject, okay? And so they aggregate all the, the news sources um, on a particular subject uh, for you to read if you so desire. Uh, the good thing about news aggregators is that it, um, that it uh, uh, allows you to read different news sources take on a particular single event. So you can get different sort of coverages and frames of how that news story is being covered. It might also allow you, if you read multiple news sources, to when you see a common sort of like um, uh, explanation or common facts that are used, it can give you confidence that, well, if, you know, three or four news sources are using those, that fact base and those sources that you can have more confidence that it's a reliable source. Um, the downside is, is that if Google News posts a New York Times or, a, 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 or an article that is behind a paywall, you're, you're, you may not be able to access it. And also unreliable sources could get sucked into the news re, uh, uh, aggregator as well. So it relies on the consumer of the news to figure out the quality of the news source. Um, and then social media is another uh, uh, place where people get their news. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I know there's a news feed on Facebook that people that kind of collect news stories for you. Um, and Twitter as well, uh, that depending on who you follow on Twitter, you can get access to those uh, news stories as well. And so social media can be a, a mechanism that people use in order to get their news. And here's another graph from Pew Research Center that shows news consumption across digital platforms. So in other words, when people are using digital platforms to access the news, what are they actually accessing? And so uh, here, you know, that uh, again, it's the dark red and the medium colored red is uh, often sometimes. And so when it comes to digital platforms, uh, you know, a, a large percentage of people are using digital platforms to access news websites or access news apps. Um, that another digital platform is just to do searching on a particular news subject. Um, but here, you know, this is uh, pretty interesting that um, you know, uh, you know, uh, 
over 50% of people rely on uh, social media uh, to access the, the news. Uh, and uh, podcasts, while they're kind of growing a little bit in use, um, that podcast is another uh, source of news media um, that comes forth through a digital platform. Okay, so what are some of the benefits of digital news media? Well, one benefit is totally con uh, convenience, right? Uh, that, you know, when you can use your digital device, your phone to access the news, um, you can basically access it whenever you want. Um, that back in the day uh, when, you know, students were waiting to c c come into the classroom, you know, that you would see them sitting out there maybe talking to each other or just maybe like staring off into space. Uh, now they could use that time to, well, they could look at social media, but they could use that time to actually like check out their news app on their phone. So very convenient waiting in store at the grocery store, uh, you know, waiting for some sort of appointment. Um, you know, if you're not a driver in a car, you can, a lot of convenience in terms of its, the access. Um, that one of the benefits too that your textbook talks about is that there, that that it's uh, that research is starting to show that one of the benefits of digital media is that it that that when you use digital media in order to access news, it's oftentimes associated with a greater interest in politics. Now that could be that people who are interested in politics use digital media in order to access the news, but you know, the, the, the more convenient it is to access the news media through your phone, then you might get more interested in politics as well. Uh, the speed, uh, so digital media, uh, you, know, uh, you know, breaking news comes across your phone, you know about it almost immediately through Twitter, you can find out about breaking news stories very quickly, so there's speed. There is the potential for adaptive information uh, through digital media, since there are not as many uh, limits on like, like time uh, in terms of a broadcast or space, printed space page. You know, you really can uh, have adaptive information. One of the things I like about accessing the news through digital media is that sometimes studies that are referenced or other articles that are referenced, uh, you can, that they're hyperlinked and you can click on them. So that as you're reading a news story, you can click on other news stories to go even deeper, or you can click on the studies that they're referencing to get even more information. And through something like a news aggregator or searching the web for a particular coverage of a news story, you can get a diversity of viewpoints. There also are clearly concerns about um, digital media. Uh, one of the concerns is the quality um, that uh, that because, well, when you access the news through a digital forum, through the internet, a lot of times, like a news aggregator, it relies upon the reader to figure out what is a reliable news source. So news aggregators aren't necessarily gatekeepers. And so that it falls upon the consumer to, um, uh, to make that determination on their own. And maybe they have the skill set to do that. Maybe they do not. Um, also that um, just because something is popular and becomes viral doesn't mean that it's actually filled with factual information. So that we know that um, uh, online uh, uh, digital platforms oftentimes use algorithms to feed you news stories, particularly through social media. Well, they might just be feeding you news stories that are um, going viral, uh, that are uh, get, uh, getting a lot of clicks and likes. And as we know that fake news stories, news stories that are not based on facts, are much more likely to travel through social media than fact-based news stories. So obviously there's a, 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 a concern there. Um, online uh, digital media can have a narrow lens because it that news sites that are digital can um, be almost like niche news sites that can um, really just focus on uh, a very specific group that they're trying to bring to their website. Uh, and so many uh, news websites specialize in a single point of view. And so like, for example, from a liberal perspective, Daily Beast, HuffPost, um, Mother Jones, right? All um, accessible online, uh, very much covering from a particular ideological perspective, liberal and ideological perspective. Red State, National Review, which I think is totally online now, and The Blaze, uh, conservative. And so um, that there is a narrow lens. And if you're consuming those, you should be aware of that they are coming from a particular um, uh, 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 viewpoint. And then your textbook talks about this thing called uh, the, the, the filter bubble and the self-selection bias that's related to this narrow lens. 
um, that when you're using, um, when you're only going to news websites that come from a particular perspective and reinforce what you want to believe to be true, um, then uh, that can really sort of lead to uh, only read, reading news that uh, conforms to what you believe to be true. It can also lead to misinformation. And so if you, uh, you know, sort of curate your digital media to only be reading liberal uh, websites or only conservative websites, and then you only follow liberals or conservatives on Twitter, and then your newsfeed is follow on Facebook is following a particular a a algorithm that's feeding you just liberal stories or just conservative news stories, you just basically get in this echo chamber where you're never hearing um, views to the contrary. And so not only is that, can that be problematic in terms of ideology? but it can also be problematic if the news stories you are reading are not fact-based but are based on information uh, and you know so your textbook sort of talks about how um, exposure to highly uh, partisan news sources news sources that have an ideological bend whether that's left or right when you access those and you have exposures to those on social media it can at leads to a lower political knowledge and so because you're not you're in your echo chamber and you're not getting like maybe the complete take on a particular event uh, it can also rise uh, lead to a rise of just sort of the tribal politics that we have right now because you are just in your echo chamber you're just in your tribe and it makes it difficult for you to engage civilly with people who are not in your echo chamber. Okay, so I just want to leave you with a, a couple of closing thoughts as we are um, ending these two lectures on the news media. Uh, you know, I just want to encourage you to not write off the news media. I get a lot of students, not a lot, but enough students that it makes me a little bit concerned that basically say that they just cannot trust the news, that they don't know what is a reliable news source, but they just basically don't read anything. And they're like, unless I can see it firsthand, then I'm not going to believe it, right? Well, it's impossible to see things firsthand, you know, for the most part, unless you or, you know, traveling throughout the whole of the United States or throughout the world. Um, and so, you know, I want to encourage you to not write off the news media and to, you know, find out which are reliable news sources and depend upon those. Because there are a lot of reliable news sources that are available to consumers that do abide by journalistic standards that are fact-based and use reliable sources and use editors to make sure that journalists are doing their job in terms of providing objective and well-sourced media. Uh, and so the New York Times, National Public uh, Radio, PBS, the BBC, Time Magazine, etc. Those are all examples of reliable news sources that you can depend on in order to, um, you know, uh, uh, feel, have some confidence in the reporting that you're getting, that that reporting is objective and based on facts. I'd also encourage you to vary your news sources, okay? So if all you do is read the New York Times, pick up the Wall Street Journal, you know, pick up the uh, Washington Post, read the Chicago Tribune, read USA Today, right? Watch the PBS NewsHour, right? Vary up your sources because the more, the, you know, if you have a nice variety of sources, then um, you're going to get a better sense of, of what the facts are. Because if many news sources are reporting the same, you know, facts, then you can have some confidence that those are in fact the facts. Because news sources are competitive with each other, right? And they compete with each other. And if, if one news source is falling down and not doing good coverage, another news source will pick that up and they'll do better coverage, okay? Because they want readers to come over to them. Also, please steer clear of overtly partisan news sources. It might make you feel good about your tribe, but it's going to hurt your level of political knowledge, and it's actually really having an eroding effect on our on our democracy because it it, it 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 leads us to think that people who don't agree with us are evil and bad, and we then you know dehumanize them, and we actually don't see them as um, like fully human. So please. Uh, steer clear of overtly partisan news sources. In other words, have the courage to break out of your, your, your ideological bubble. And be mindful of misinformation. If you're reading something and it just doesn't seem to make sense and it doesn't seem to be true, follow up on it. Do your research and see what other people are saying about it. There are great websites you can go to, such as factcheck.org, that will allow you to um, do the fact checking that you need to do in order to find out whether or not a news story is true or misinformation. So I encourage you to do that. All right. Thanks for listening. And I'll talk to you again soon.